Man, crap happens. Would you look at this, man? I was getting ready to smoke this jerky today, and I've noticed my burner's had a pretty yellow flame on it, like it's got an air leak. So I just undid the tube here, and this was rocking back and forth with a big gap in it. And there's two tiny screws that are supposed to be there. Well, they were. Barely touched them, and they just broke off. This is the Pacific Northwest, so everything rusts. Welcome back, friends. This is the day before disaster where my smoker takes a nosedive on me. Today we're making roughneck jerky. This is an old recipe I've been using for about six years and I really haven't changed it at all. I'm going to skip over the basics in this episode, but if you want to know the basics of jerky making, check out my previous video called Habanero Beef Jerky. I call this roughneck jerky because I used to make it on the weekend and take it to a manufacturing plant that I worked at at the time. I never seemed to be able to make enough of it for the guys that worked for me. A roughneck is usually thought of as an oil field worker, but actually the term applies to any person doing hard manual labor, and that's why I coined it roughneck jerky. Now let's get on with making the marinade.
crap happens. Would you look at this, man? I was getting ready to smoke this jerky today, and I've noticed my burner's had a pretty yellow flame on it, like it's got an air leak. So I just undid the tube here, and this was rocking back and forth with a big gap in it. And there's two tiny screws that are supposed to be there. Well, they were. Barely touched them, and they just broke off. This is the Pacific Northwest, so everything rusts. So, this is what I've got here. Uh, the good news is I am a machinist. I used to own a machine shop. Um, that is before my disability and nine orthopedic surgeries. But I'm still perfectly capable. I'm going to drill, drill and tap two holes right there and there. And, uh... I'm actually using brass. Smoky Mountain, take note. You know, you tried to save five cents. You should have used brass. Would have never happened. So, the other funny irony is I've got three machinist toolboxes back in storage, but it doesn't do me any good on the road. So, I'm buying drill and tap and, you know. Anyway, we'll get it done. I'm not going to bore you with doing that so I'll let you see the final result let me show you what I've done real quick I uh, basically drilled two new holes here I drilled two new holes there and there and then I drilled two here what I'm gonna do well two here well, my finger there in the frame right here and here and then you take this tap that's what you call tapping a hole Tapping a hole. No, uh, that's funny, huh? Anyway, that's tapping a hole. You're putting threads in it. We'll get back with you when we're done. Well, here we are, folks. Less than 20 minutes later, and drilled and tapped. Put our new brass bolts in right here. So if you ever get in a bind and you break a bolt off, it's, it's no big deal. Just drill and tap a new hole. It's it's not rocket science. So don't be intimidated by it. It's really simple. All right, so it's kind of late in the day, so I think I'm going to have to smoke that jerky tomorrow. But at least this is fixed. Oh, just put the jerky in. We're running about a 50-50 mix of mesquite and applewood. Running about 180 degrees. Okay, y'all, while we're in the drying process of the beef jerky, I've got a little story about how I came about getting that smoker. And it's a little bit long, but just stick with me. So like I mentioned earlier, I had a machine shop. We made specialty parts. Uh, we made specialty machinery. Um, being down in the south, we had a big wild hog problem. I also branched off and designed a hog trap, and we welded those and sold them. And to this day, you can find those on ranches in Louisiana and Texas. But one day, we had some friends that were cleaning out their house, and they said, Hey, we've got this old 1970s filing cabinet. Can you use it? I'm like, Yeah, well, stuck it in the shop. And it sat there for about two or three months. And I mean, it was 1970s. It was heavy duty. It's not like the crap you get now. I mean, it was heavy. And then one day this light bulb went off. I'm like, man, I think I can make a smoker out of that. So they gave it to, you know, they gave it to me. It sat there for a couple months. And literally, this was long before the YouTube days. I didn't even do a video on it. I think I took pictures. If you, if you, if you know of the Barbecue Brethren... Uh, forums. There's probably a thread on there from way back, probably six, seven years ago, about the build. I, I really wish I'd have done a video on it. So, yeah, I took an old filing cabinet, made a smoker out of it, and it's a bad. It was a badass smoker, and it weighed about 200 pounds. It, I could put charcoal in it. The the bottom of it was a uh, the smoke box. 
The bottom of it was the firebox, and I also had made a conversion where I could put a gas burner in it to run it off propane. And it weighed about 200 pounds, so fast forward, we hit the road, decided to start traveling. Couldn't take it with me. So we had applied for a job in Washington, a work camping job near Mount St. Helens. Uh, we drove 3,000 miles to get there, and this is a picture. This was our front yard for a year, a year, yeah. So anyway, there was this, this older guy that kept coming down every weekend in his camper. And he's about my dad's age, and in no, in no time we were, became friends, and to this day we're still friends, I still talk to him. One day I got a phone call from him and he said, One day I got a phone call from him. Jake, lay down. <clears throat> so one day I got a phone call from him and he said, Dan, I got a present for you. Bring your truck up to my house and pick it up. And he only lived like 30 minutes from us. So we drove up one weekend and he took me into his work workshop and there's this damn near brand new smoker sitting there and I looked at him and he's like I've used it twice it's yours I know you're gonna use it it's yours for free just load it up it is a Smoky Mountain series don't confuse that with Weber this is actually made by Landman it came with this nice cover and it stays outside in the Pacific Northwest year round. So you're looking at about three years. And uh, we get a lot of rain here. Uh, we got 32 inches of rain in January this year. And probably by the end of the year, we will probably have about 72 inches total. And like any smoker, it looks well used. And it has been. Uh, as my dad always said, if it's too pretty, you're not using it enough. It's got four racks that slide out. Uh, your water pan, your chip box slides out here. Heavy duty. Uh, I'm guessing that's cast steel, maybe? Yeah, probably cast steel. Uh, that slides in and out. If I had one complaint, it would be that to add chips or chunks to that chip box, I have to open the door, slide this out, take the lid off, and by then I've lost all my heat. But the good thing is it recovers pretty quick. If I had any suggestion, it would be to make a door right along here <clears throat> that would just open it and you could just kind of slide it out but yeah it, it looks like it's been well used but it works good here's a little pro tip y'all i did go an extra i did go in a full hour but i cut these pieces off here for prior to smoking and then i'll try them as i go see if i got enough smoke on it I'm pretty sure this is probably about done. Yep, we're gonna, we're gonna pull our smoke now. Three hours later. Um, I'm gonna take your beef jerky and bend it. And it starts to break like that and you start to see that right there, you're, you're pretty much there, honestly. We're, we're, we're pretty much done here, so. Look at the camera. Why would I look at the camera? So you can tell them that you're done. No, we're good enough, I think. Am I, not, am I supposed to be quit recording? Just, just, just keep recording. Okay. So, I mean, at this point, you know, you want to check your beef jerky through the process. You want to bend it. These are thick pieces. Probably gonna let this go about another hour. 
what I do is I like to tear it like that. We got about another hour for this to dry out, and it'll be perfect. So, uh, we will uh, do this for about another hour, and we'll be done. Kill it. Make our own beef jerky. That's what we do.